the action. I want to see action, and uh, that's exactly what we're going to see. So switch that into game and unpause. And hello, welcome back to the CKF versus MCL series for the War is Coming group stage of uh, the tournament. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the, how the rest of these games play out. Obviously, CKF being fairly dominant so far, but MCL really putting up quite a good fight. That first game, they were pushed back pretty quickly once CKF reached the Imperial Age. And the second game as well, MCL doing a really good job of taking water control, but unfortunately getting pushed back once they reached the Imperial Age. And in the last game, we saw the orange player, Grammy, making quite a few really costly mistakes on um, his side of the map. So hopefully we're not going to see anything like that this time. The map here is the War is Coming map pack. But the map is uh, Team Continental, as the War is Coming map pack contains many maps from which it draws at random. Team Continental should be an interesting one, and I haven't actually seen a game played on this map, I don't think, for some time. This map is uh, pretty, pretty standard, I think, in the... Uh, Forgotten Empires. I've seen this map a few times in Forgotten Empires, but I've never seen it actually at a really high level. And so it should be interesting to see whether players really prioritize water control here or if they prioritize getting onto the center of the map. But we'll look a little bit more in detail at the map later on. You guys, like I said just before the game started, they will be pleased to know that I have got the Greater Black patch, which means that, hooray, at last we can see the, the gray player on the mini-map there in the black now and not looking the same color as the damn stone mines so thankfully I've got that now I just have to find out some solution for the yellow player so it doesn't look like we're looking at gold but granted I did usually have more problems spotting the gray player on the map than spotting the yellow player so hopefully that's all good now and you guys are gonna be happy with that as well so uh, down to the very south of the map then for the CKF team in the blue we've got I am okay he's playing as the Spanish and he is on that flank position in the pocket, in the teal, we've got CBJ Lang playing as the Koreans. The other pocket player is PBTD in the grey or the black on the minimap playing as the Persians. Add up to the sort of northeast for the CKF team um, is Jeffrey playing as the Aztecs on that flank position. So CKF probably the favourites to win the, this set of games and obviously they've demonstrated great team play so far. But we should have a look at the MCL team as well up to the very north of the map. In the purple, we've got Always playing as the Vikings. Pretty sure he was... Uh, no, he was playing Mayans in the last game, sorry. But uh, Always up in the north. He's on that flank position. In the pocket, in the green, we've got Magnata. And he's playing as the Franks. And I've said this in previous games by these guys as well, or from the MCL team. Magnata does seem to be the strongest of the MCL players. He does seem to be... Um, putting up the best fight against CKF so far and I think MCL are probably going to be fairly happy that he's in the pocket position as the Franks here because they these guys might want to be taking some you know, pretty high aggression in the center of the map with those Frankish Knights which of course we know to be so strong so hopefully Magnata going to put in a good fight here the other pocket player for MCL Master Clan League we've got Scrath he's playing in the red as the Celts and on the south side in the orange we have got Grammy playing as the Mongols on this flank position. So looking like the flanks, we've got Mongols and Vikings for MCL and we've got Aztecs and Spanish for CKF. Uh, these teams are not mirrored sieves actually. The CKF team do not have a Viking player. They have the Spanish, the Koreans, the uh, Persians and the Aztecs, whereas the MCL team have the Vikings, the uh, Franks, the Celts, and uh, the uh, the Mongols there. So non mirrorsives should certainly add a little bit of flavor. And we'll see if we see the Viking player doing a a kind of sling here. Now, obviously, the Viking player always is on the flank, but this map is a pretty easily wallable map. We'll take a look at the map in more depth right about now. They have a pretty big crossing points, though, uh, on all the sides and across the center as well. Everybody has their own crossing point into the center of the map. 
The outside of the map is uh, really great for fishing, and I'll be very surprised if all of these players, have, if none of these players take fish. I think everybody will have a dock, and everybody will be fishing here. Pretty much guaranteed good fish wherever you dock here, and unless you dock on the front, which would be very silly, you're, like I say, guaranteed very good fishing, and it's really valuable to have those fish. And that, I think, is going to put quite an emphasis on the water. Not to mention the fact that the water control will be vital later on for controlling these crossing points into the center of the map where there is a lot of extra wood, a lot of extra gold and stone as well. And I think we'll see players coming forwards here, potentially in the Castle Age. I've seen these maps played very few times in the past, but it does seem to me like the winning team often is the one to gain control of the centre uh, towards the later stages of the game. Now, I think I do actually recall seeing one game where one team was very aggressive in the centre of the map. They took full map control in the middle in the Castle Age, but then the other team busted in once they reached the Imperial Age and they stormed the center of the map once they hit Imperial and took control and then went on to win. So perhaps a strategy here for the CKF team who, as we know, like to wall up very heavily could be to do a pretty heavy grush, win the water control and then boom up to Imperial to then go and take the center. Now, like I said earlier on, it should be a very easy wall here for always. He's got this wood line, which makes it really easy for him to wall up on the right and the left side of that and he could very very easily focus on water here but if he does focus on water a little bit too much then he might delay his castle age compared to the other guys and that could be a problem if the mcl team want to take the middle but like i say it should be uh, interesting to see which strategy these teams go for whether they're prioritizing the middle over the water and to be honest with you i think in the late game overall the uh, the center control is what really wins it. It doesn't matter if you have water control or not. If you're, if the other team put a lot of castles up on this shoreline, the galleys or the galleons at that point in the later stages of the game are not really going to be doing too much damage. So I think the center control is probably more important than the uh, the water control. But you can never underestimate fishing and the amount of food, the sheer amount of food that that brings in for you or for your team. So the purple player always adding in his second dock already. We've got Jeffrey adding in his second and third dock now as well. And it's going to be a full grush from both the players in the north. At the south, the grush from the blue player does not seem like it's coming in just yet. Though he is sending a villager forwards, perhaps to build some more wall and complete that wall off. It doesn't look like blue lost any villagers here, but he didn't finish that wall off for some reason, which is rather strange. Perhaps he did lose a villager and we missed it, but if we have a quick look at the population tab here, Jeffrey isn't exactly behind anyone. He's got more, po sorry, uh, I am okay. The blue player isn't exactly behind. He's got more population than other players in this game, so I think it's unlikely that he lost a villager over here. Now, surprisingly, the left flank player, the Grammy, guy here in orange is not actually uh well he's not doing a grush by the looks of it he's still taking quite a lot of food and he is up to the fuel age now doing a market and what seems to be a blacksmith as well very soon because it looks like he wants to fast castle this could be risky but then again on this left flank from the blue player he as well is not doing a galley rush it just seems to be galley rushing in the north of the map with the orange and the blue player at the south both seemingly going for a fast castle funny though i'm okay walling his villager in there because the scouts from magna and the other MCL players were quite close by and that villager getting an escort back to base from that scout cavalry there and with the blue player I am okay trying to wall this up and there's that blacksmith for him as well so it seems like fast castles from both players in the south and that's the Spanish and the Mongols doing that now the Mongols in theory should have a slightly faster castle time and I think that is probably going to be the case in this game. But we'll watch the North for the time being to see what Jeffrey and Always are getting up to. Doesn't look like any of the pocket players are grushing at all here either. And I think that fast castle is probably so that these players can take the center control as quickly as they can. So, so far... Uh, always with those three docks on the front here and he's also got that dock on the back the fourth there as well just gonna spot jeffrey out i hope he spots jeffrey out my goodness me jeffrey sending all those galleys to the back of the map there and always has not noticed at all those galleys just five of them 
enough to take down fishing ships very quickly, and that's really bad news for always. I mean, he's, he's he had one job on this flank. His one job was to make sure that these uh, galleys did not get by and not kill their fishing ships, but what happened? Yeah, they came in and they killed those fishing ships, and that is exactly what Jeffrey's doing right now. Three fishing ships gonna go down, probably the fourth as well, as always sends his galleys forwards looking to take revenge and get the ships from Jeffrey as well. Now the Aztecs here, not exactly the best sieve to be going full water with, considering that they don't get Galleon. Not going to be an issue for now, but it might be a little bit of an issue later on, as Jeffrey comes to the back here, takes out Magnata's fishing ships as well, and already the MCL team at a bit of a disadvantage, as these guys in the center start to try and take some more control. And wow, after looking at that blue water for a while, switching into the middle, it kind of burned my retinas there slightly. Uh, I've never had a, or experienced that before, but goodness me, uh, the desert seems to be rather bright and after looking at the water for a little while. So in the center of the map, that villager is still getting escorted by this scout. It's standing by. It's like, I will protect you, fair maiden, as she goes to mine the gold as a slave for the rest of her life after building a house and a few palisade walls. But I find it funny that that scout's just chilling, just uh, following around. There it goes. Uh, I think she's got a professional stalker here in the center of the map, CBJ Lang. Well, the clue in the name, CBJ. Um, anyway, so uh, Grammy on the center of the map, two TCs coming straight up. Same for I am okay as well. Uh, these guys are gonna start getting those TCs up very quickly. Magnata as well in the center of the map there. PPTD going for a little bit of a different strategy and that is Knights coming out with Knights very quickly here. Magnata taking those precautions, putting a wall up behind his villagers so that TC will go up successfully. And meanwhile, MCL stone walling up the center of the map to prevent those knights from running into their precious economies. Uh, looks like Grabby gonna be the first up with the second and third TC. Oh my goodness me, I'm a fool, an idiot and a fool because I'm okay not building a TC. He was building a castle and that castle is just uh, so good. It's right just outside of range of that town center, but oh no. Oh no, the stalker's gonna die. That's sad. That is sad. But that castle, once um, Fletching comes in, might just be in range of that town center. And we've got some conquistadors coming out for I'm OK now as well, which is gonna force those villagers to be idle. And no, the castle was in range of the town center. It just wasn't automatically attacking for some reason. We've also got PBTD with a few knights out. And this is really bad news for the MCL team. They're, they're really losing control of the center of the map already. And the, the castle age is only just coming in for their players now uh, at this very moment. So it's not promising at the moment. Now in the north, always, and Jeffrey still having a little bit of a battle there. And uh, it looks like Jeffrey's gonna be pushed back from the back of the map, but he did take out both Always and Magnata's fishing ships. And if you consider the fact now that Magnata is making knights, he would have really appreciated having his fishing ships alive still, as those fishing ships would provide extra food, which means extra knights and easier villager production simultaneously with that. Whereas uh, PBTD, He's got seven fishing ships at the back. He can pump out knights from two stables thanks to that. And that means he will get an inherent advantage over Magnata here. There's no question about it. That advantage will be there. And there's not really a lot Magnata can do about it since he lost those fishing ships. And those Jeffrey galleys are at the back. I just heard a Wallalo. Um, ah, Bustem donated $10. Hey, Zach. I know it could be... Um, could be a ways away, but will you do something special when you get to 500k total views? Hmm, potentially. I don't really have any ideas yet, but I'll definitely give it some thought. Um, I mean, on YouTube, I know the YouTube channel has about uh, 11 million views now, so Twitch is a long way behind. Uh, but I've not really thought about milestones for Twitch, to be honest with you. I will give it some thought, though, and if you have any ideas or suggestions, then I'll definitely take them into consideration. But... Yeah, thank you very much, B Stem, for your donation there. I very much appreciate it. Uh, but unfortunately, it seems like the chat might have just gone down because the chat is not loading. Oh, once again, Twitch has failed us. And for some reason as well, this recorded game just went down. Uh, Magne Magnata's keyboard is bugged. Save and restore. Uh, so it looks like these guys have saved and restored this one, and we can continue it. But 
Right, there it is. Game 3 restore. Alright, so, yeah, guys, apologies for that. Uh, the slight delay there between the first bit and the second bit. Um, the game obviously was bugged out. Well, not bugged out, it's just McNata's keyboard apparently broke. And guys, restored or saved and restored. But hey, the chat seems to have come back, which is good news. Uh, good stuff, and if the chat is not working for you on Twitch, just refresh and it should load up. But yeah, looks like CKF at the moment are getting quite ahead uh, in terms of this center control here. Magnat has only got one town center, Grammy's got the two. Now, although CKF only have one TC in the center, they are much much outnumbering MCL team and this TC is about to go down from Grammy fairly soon as well as Grammy makes double monasteries and monks. Now I think monks are not a great counter to conquistadors to be honest with you. I mean they can be good if they get lucky but there is a bit of RNG involved in monks and the like. The three monks gonna come out here and we'll see if they manage to get a conversion or not. Of course the conquistador is a fast moving unit so it can move out of range very easily. And with 6 range versus the 9 range on a monk, they can come in, snipe the monk very quickly, and then move out of range again. And I rarely see monks converting conquistadors, to be honest with you. We'll see if uh, Orange manages to pull it off. But Orange, so far, losing that TC. And this area is really locked down by I am OK now. He's got plus one attack and range as well. So it could be that this TC is now under fire once this one falls. And that's very costly for Grammy. His economy has been affected quite heavily by it. But fortunately for him and Scrath, they still have their fishing for now. On the top of the map, looks like Always is prevailing on the water. Just a few galleys left for Jeffrey here, with Always managing to push him away and take down uh, some fishing ships, I think. But there are still actually galleys down here from Jeffrey. I didn't even notice that. Jeffrey's on the way up to Castle, and he'll be probably looking to keep them safe so he can upgrade them to War Galley. Now, this TC from Magnata, that's just beautiful, isn't it? I mean, he's stonewalled that in. He's got Palisade and a house behind. There's no room for farms but at least he's got some wood and at least he's got some gold here as well but this is hardly um, the ideal situation in the center of the map for Magnata here. So that TC is down, this one is now under fire, and it's falling quite rapidly as well. Of course, since that TC has gone down, it does allow these guys to start harassing Grammy in the centre of the map here. This town centre from Grammy just going up out of range of the castle, thankfully. But there's quite a lot of conquistadors, quite a lot of knights out already. And you'll notice that the PPTD not really going all out on those upgrades, just getting the... Uh, the bloodlines upgrade for now and that is because obviously Magnata was making some knights and he wants to fight on an even footing with the uh, Persian knights not getting bloodlines for free of course. Anyway, the <laughs> monks coming in from PVTD trying to convert those villagers from Magnata underneath that town center. But this is just opening so much space for the CKF team in the middle now. They could very easily, very comfortably add some siege and I'm surprised that they've not added siege yet but we do have IMOK okay coming forwards with some town centers in the center of the map and uh, we've also got always going around the back with these galleys and if you look at this Teal's got quite a few fishers back here I'm surprised that uh, that I'm okay, sorry, not I'm okay, always even the purple player, the viking player of MCL, surprised he didn't take out the fishing ships from D. A very, very odd that he didn't manage to spot them. And he's going to be coming up here at the back of the map now against CBJ Lang, but Lang has spotted those galleys out, and he's got more galleys on the way over already. So it doesn't seem like always is that far ahead. Let's see if he's up to the castle edge at least. He is clicking up, but like I said earlier on, he has got to be careful. Uh, one thing you can fall into the trap of doing is kind of over over investing in water and as such delaying your castle age time considerably so we've got uh, P CPJ line bringing a ton of war galleys at the back here and that will take out always his navy if he sticks around here and fights which hopefully he won't for his own sake anyway Another castle going up for I am OK in the middle. Spanish player obviously wanting those castles to get the uh, the conquistadors out and hold down that map control. Second TC just falls from Grammy there, but Grammy and Scrath starting to put up some castles of their own. But this second castle, that's going to be annoying. That TC is lost for Magnata, and those villagers are attempting to run, but the conquistadors are there to head them off, and that's going to be a villager soup on the middle of the map here, as that TC now comes under fire from I am OK, and it is inevitably going to go down. There's no protection for that in the center at all. Jeffrey's also got a TC up here and CKF looking very good with their map control 
in the center of the map at the moment. Uh, we've got some, uh, well, quite a lot actually of monks from Grammy here. He has managed to convert one conquistador, and uh, at the moment it may might have actually uh, managed to convert one knight. And if Grammy micro as well, he will get a lot of knight conversions here. And if you convert one knight with one monk, that means that the monk has won because that is a really good value trade. But of course. PBTD with way more knights than Grammy can deal with there. Not enough Monk Micro, and they just got outnumbered and stomped out of the center of the map. Pushed right back once again, and those monks are unable to get the conversions. And this is what I'm saying about the blue Conquistadors here. They can move into range and shoot, and if you're not paying enough attention, your monks are dead before you can do anything at all. Great, making a run through though, and that was really nice. I don't know if you guys were quite quite um, noticing what happened there at that gate. Uh, Grammy ran through with some uh, with some knights that he converted and uh, PPTD followed and en enabling him to, to get those knights through. Sneaking around the edge here between that gate and the water. Red tried a very quick wall off with those gates but that failed and now they've got knights with plus two defense and bloodlines into the heart of their economies. Always coming in though with those galleys here to try and help clean things up from the galleys of Jeffrey and at the south of the map those fishing ships from PBTD did get taken down by always his galleys but like I said I think the center of the map ultimately is probably more valuable than the water control and that's the GG MCL just gonna give it up right there they just don't feel like they're gonna have a chance in this game and I think those knights getting in from PBTD would obviously have really messed things up for them the MCL team losing three town centers in the middle this one about to fall and with the zero zero map control in the middle at all and the imperial age upgrades coming in very soon at about 35 minutes those would have been ticking through or coming through uh, really bad news for mcl they did have a little bit of water control though they were taking down those uh, good old th those good old um fishing ships and stuff and rory rory R Raw Rimbo. <laughs> there we go. Raw Rimbo. Thank you very much for subscribing. Thank you for becoming a Wallalo Warlord. Welcome to the Wallalo Warlords and thank you very much. Sorry, I uh, could not say your name there. That was uh, kind of just a fail. I am really bad at reading under pressure. <laughs> But yeah, that was a pretty short game. CKF dominating that, it seems. And MCL just, just don't seem to have what it takes here to get a point on the board against CKF. CKF, a lot of great teamwork. And I think their overall strategy was better rushing down the middle of the map and uh, getting that well under their control without...